Thanksgiving. Family coming together. Millions traveling across this beautiful country. Some conversations will be tough, but you're tough too. You may have been on the losing side of this election, but you are on the right side of history. We're still in this fight, and so are you. You may not feel thankful this year, but America is still here and still a nation of enormous blessings. Yes, we'll have to fight for her, but she'll always be worth fighting for. It won't be easy, but America is stronger than him, stronger than hate, bigger than one election. So this week, let's give thanks, and next week, let's give them hell. Happy Thanksgiving to each and everyone who is watching this video. This is a time of coming together. This is a time of thanksgiving. Yes, I know we have political differences. I know we have, we don't agree on candidates. We don't agree on policies. But at least this day, we should be thankful. At least in your life, you might have something thankful too. Um, good afternoon. This message is for those that continue to DM and comment saying they're going home for the holidays. They don't know if they can be around their family. They need my sassiness, my encouragement, my empowerment. Come here. Let me talk to you all and hear me when I say this. Lean in. Fuck them people. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I'm sick and tired of you all complaining about not wanting to go home to your families and still you go home. You need to go somewhere that regulates your nervous system that does not cause you anxiety, that does not draw you to anger. If you want to argue at a table with somebody, go to a Denny's, go to a Waffle House. You do not need to be at your family home. And the great thing about being grown, you can select your own family now. You do not have to go there, okay? If you don't want to sit next to Uncle Ben's creepy ass, you don't have to. Do you hear me? If you don't want to talk to Miss Nancy about the latest political climate, you don't have to. You all keep putting yourselves in these situations and you just don't have to. I want you to find somewhere else to go. Okay, listen to me, college students. If you feel like I can't, I have to go home because these are people that are paying my bills while I'm out. Okay, then you need to stay in your room. Okay, you don't have to be forced to be around these people. I'm not sure why you all don't understand that you don't have to be in situations you don't want to be in. Okay, and if they want to get all Christian like on you, tell them you're being like Jesus. Flip over the table and walk out. I'm sick and I'm tired. Fuck them people. Go somewhere else. Go where you are celebrated and not just tolerated. She's advising us to go where we are celebrated. So you not associate with people who voted against your rights. So if that is how you think, uh, I don't know. I'm not here to decide on your side. You're the one to decide what to do. But there is a lot of ideas. There is a lot of uh, advices. You, the one, you and your heart, you're the one to choose what to do. But apart from all the things, we still have to be thankful. I want you to listen to this uh, very sad story. I saw this story and then uh, it made me sad, very sad. Please um, watch this story. My fear is that I'll get deported to a country that I don't know. Camilla Ruilova Bustamente. She came across the border as a seven-month-old baby with her mother and grandmother. 23 years later, she's still not been able to get the paperwork she needs to be legal threat of deportation is imminent. How frightened are you? What's your fear? Uh, having been here since I was seven months old, uh, my biggest fear I think would be um, that my family is torn apart. To be fair, we tell her story to voters, Trump voters, just an hour outside of DC to see if there was any empathy for Camilla. And there was some, but not much. There's going to be sad stories. You know? She might be among them. She might be among them. I don't know how it's all going to plan out. I would love to see, like, she came at seven months old. It's not her fault she was here illegally, you know? Her mom is with her, by the way, and is also still undocumented. Well, her mom should go home at least, at the very least. Coming Others had pay. less empathy. Send her home. I mean, let her figure out how to get legal. We just got to get control over the border and know who's coming in here. Did you vote for Trump? I did. It was one of the reasons because of immigration? Yes. Yes. My family did it the right way. So why not go down the path of actually becoming 
official. AOC, as she's known, is leading the charge, urging Joe Biden to give temporary protected status to 300,000 undocumented Ecuadorians, many of whom live in her district in New York. We agree. Being undocumented is a problem. But our solution, instead of turning the military on our own people, is to document them. To document the undocumented. Not so simple. The Immigration Office told us it has nearly 7.8 million immigration cases currently on its books, while other estimates put the total number of undocumented migrants at over 13 million people a number that's risen sharply under President Biden, and officials told us there are more than 600,000 migrants with either criminal convictions or pending criminal charges. And now, MAGA family, I don't want to spend Thanksgiving alone. Is there, please, anyone I could spend Thanksgiving with? I'm like, I have no family, so I would love to spend Thanksgiving with somebody. Please, thank you. Yeah, it's a time of coming together. It's a time of at least supporting those people that are in trouble supporting those people that have been uh that have been disowned by their family it is a time to do so now uh, this is a message from the president from the coming president we're very blessed to call this nation our home and that's what america is it is our home it's where we raise our families care for our loved ones look out for our neighbors and live out our dreams it's my prayer that on this Thanksgiving, we begin to heal our divisions and move forward as one country, strengthened by shared purpose and very, very common resolve. In declaring this national holiday, President Lincoln called upon Americans to speak with one voice and one heart. That's just what we have to do. We've just finished a long and bruising political campaign. Emotions are raw and tensions just don't heal overnight. It doesn't go quickly, unfortunately. But we have before us the chance now to make history together, to bring real change to Washington, real safety to our cities, and real prosperity to our communities, including our inner cities, so important to me and so important to our country. But to succeed, we must enlist the effort of our entire nation. This historic political campaign is now over, but now begins a great national campaign to rebuild our country and to restore the full promise of America for all of our people. I'm asking you to join me in this effort. It's time to restore the bonds of trust between citizens, because when America is unified, there is nothing beyond our reach, and I mean absolutely nothing. Let us give thanks for all that we have, and let us boldly face the exciting new frontiers that lie ahead. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Those are sweet words to some people, but others, it's like uh, paper, it's like chili you are putting in their mouth. It's paining them right now because what they are expecting to happen to them starting the next year. Now, this lady have refused to invite the family. So, am I the asshole for telling my pregnant cousin that she's not invited to my house for Thanksgiving? And I know just based off the question, it sounds like, yes, you're the asshole, but let me give y'all some context. So, most of my family still lives in New York. Um, we live down here in Georgia. So, because everyone is living their lives, doing their own thing, we don't really get to spend a lot of time together. So, I decided this year I'm going to host Thanksgiving. Everybody's going to come down to my house. It's going to be great. Everybody's like, yeah, cool. They're in, right? Sounds great. Last night, I'm on the phone with my grandmother and she's like, oh, by the way, I don't think I can make it to Thanksgiving. And I'm like, why not? And she's like, well, because if, if your cousin goes into labor, I don't want her to be here by herself. And I'm like, all right, cool. That makes sense. While I'm on the phone with my grandmother, said cousin calls. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna talk to you later. I'm gonna go talk to her. A little bit of background on my cousin. She is, oh, excuse me. She is 19. This is her first pregnancy. Now, even though she is biologically my cousin, her mother and I grew up like sisters. So I've always been like a second mother to her. So we have a very close relationship. So we're talking, you know, she's complaining about pregnancy and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, by the way, um, my grandmother is not coming to Thanksgiving because of you. And she's like, what are you talking about? 
So I explained to her, I was like, yeah, she said she would rather be up there with you, you know, for, in case you go into labor. She doesn't want you by yourself. And she goes, but I'm coming down for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, no, you're not. And she was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, baby girl, your due date is November 27th. Thanksgiving is November 23rd. You are not traveling 800 miles at nine months pregnant. She was like, yeah, 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 I'm coming. I said, no, you are not coming to my house for Thanksgiving. She goes, I don't understand why not. I'm like, what if you go into labor on the plane? She goes, oh, no, 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 that's not going to happen. I'm like, how do you know? She goes, because I'm not going to fly. I'm going to take the China bus. For those of you who don't know, the China bus is a budget coach bus that runs from Chinatown in New York City all the way down to Florida, I believe. So what I said to her was, you're going to take a 24-hour bus ride because first I thought it was going to be the two-hour plane ride. No, you're going to take a 24-hour bus ride at nine months pregnant? Absolutely the fuck not. Absolutely the fuck not. It, it makes no sense. I'm running out of time. I'm, I'm going to continue in part two. These are three things not to do as a guest in Thanksgiving. Hey everybody, it's Bobby Flay and here are three things not to do as a guest on Thanksgiving. Number one, don't bring a dish that needs to be prepared, like, you know, a salad where you bring the greens and the dressing or you have to put something in the oven. Whoever's cooking that day has plenty to do. Number two, don't bring something that you're the only person in the room that's going to like it, right? So think about everybody else that's there. Think about something that everybody really likes to eat. And number three, don't be late. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I can't wait for the whole world to spend time with their family. Not everybody's going to have a happy Thanksgiving this Why year. Why would someone not have a happy Thanksgiving? Now's the time for family bonding. Well, divorce rates at an all-time high. Good. People are more divided than ever. Good. People are cutting off their family members. If you cut off your family members, then you're the problem. You should never cut off your family! The people that typically say never cut off your family members you doesn't have, have toxic family members that they can't be around. But at the end of the day, you should always forgive your family no members. No matter what happens, they're still family. Okay, so if somebody's horrible to you over and over again and you keep forgiving them, then what do you do? Then you forgive them one more time! They didn't mean it! This shows that you've never had to deal with this in your life. Well, of course, my family's not divorced and I received love my entire I've life. I've never been brutally betrayed by a family member repeatedly over and over. I again. think it's better to understand that people have differences and it's just better to acknowledge that not everyone's going to be having a happy Thanksgiving and that some people will be they alone. They should pick up the phone, call their family and make amends. I'm trying to be positive, but everybody else is being Well, this negative. is just the reality of America now. What, people spending the holidays alone or in small groups? What's the solution I then? I guess we'll have to figure that out together. After listening to what you had to say, I think that is too Happy Thanksgiving to those spending it alone or with a small group of people. With the divorce rate at an all-time high, it's hard to get families together during these times. I just wanted to say you are important, you matter. I hope you have a great day on the day of Thanksgiving. You matter, you are important, you are loved, you are loved. Have a great day on the day of Thanksgiving. I just told my parents I'm not coming to Thanksgiving dinner. I said to my dad, I do not have the emotional energy to be around people who are not involved with their own healing, who are not authentic, who are fake, who have these different ideologies. I don't have the emotional availability to meet that this year, so I'm out. I can't come. Thankfully, I have a father who respects that, who didn't pressure me or push me or make me feel guilty. I know a lot of people don't have that. And I'm glad I'm finally listening to myself and not putting myself in situations that are just going to be so draining and respecting this lower season that I'm in. Because so often I've had these low seasons and I've just pushed through everything and come out on the other side feeling worse and spiraling deeper. And now if I carve out the time to surround myself with, with, with spaces or places that, that at least don't steal energy from me. That's a win. So here's permission for holiday season. You don't have to go. If they're going to take something from you, you don't have to. You voted for a candidate endorsed by the KKK. For the rest of your life, you have to know that you voted the same way as the KKK. No ifs, ands, or buts. No doubt about it. Which I told him she was chiming in and agreeing because... There's no way around it. You voted for hatred. You voted against women, 
against the gay community, against Mexicans. Uh, things are not easy right now to the MAGA people and even other people who have been affected uh, but by what is going to happen or what is happening uh, right now. Tension is high to people who are not uh, documented, yes, which are planning or which are scared to be deported back to their uh, country. Now, this lady doesn't understand why people they want to run the holidays. I can't be the only person on this planet that has family members or people they may know that when it comes to the holidays, I promise you they will do anything they can to ruin them. You know, the type of people that are unhappy, so misery loves company, right? So they're determined to make your life miserable, hurt your feelings, or do whatever they can to just ruin your happiness. Well, honey, the person I know came out full-fledged last night, and when I tell you, I just want to cancel Thanksgiving altogether. What is this thing on my lip? Oh my God, of course. Stress does cause breakouts. I have been so excited for the holidays this year. I'm excited about Thanksgiving. I cannot wait to start cooking. I've been cleaning my house. I've got people coming over. And now, I just don't even care. Because this person got mad, they wanted to start spewing out hate and just hurtful things for no reason. Nobody came after them. Nobody said anything to them. It just came out of left field. I've been up all night, angry, upset, crying. I mean, if you can't tell, I look like crap, but I just want to cancel the holidays. I'm just, I'm over it. I'm still going to do Thanksgiving because of my children, but I'm going to tell you right now, I think I'm going to uninvite any and everybody else that is not my immediate family. After what transpired last night, I am so sad. I can't be the only one that knows anybody like this. Very disheartening. Guys, my auntie said I'm not invited over for Thanksgiving tomorrow. Yay! She said I'll be telling all her business. Yay! But I haven't told everyone. So since I can't come over and get all the free drinks, because auntie, if you haven't realized, every time I come, I told you I already ate before I got there. I'd be in there starving because the food smelled good, but I know if I put my mouth on it, I might not make it to another day. So I just take all the drinks and I take a little to-go plate every now and then to make you feel better. But I can't take it in my car. So if you ever lifted up your trash bin, the plate is right in there because I don't know if it's roaches in it or not. Can't stay too long. Can't bring nothing back. My mama taught me that when I was little. Yeah. And all the business that I told, it was just me hyping it up because you get drunk and you tell all your business. All I do is just make sure everybody heard you. Because I would never just tell you business. I'd be like, y'all heard what Auntie T said now. Auntie T said that her husband was messing around with Auntie Bree. Now they got their child and Auntie T don't know who baby that is. So I'm not really telling your business. I'm repeating what you said to everybody, but they too intoxicated to listen. So I got to make sure they heard everything. But I would never tell the internet your business on how you got the little bugs crawling around on Thanksgiving and how I'm afraid. How you be stealing all the liquor that we get. You get it from the liquor store. We all know you're stealing and walk out with it. Put it up on our address and act like you. I can't say that word online. <laughs> I'll never tell them. I cut your husband. I can't say that online either. I shouldn't say that online. And I never tell them how you got kicked out of your house because you couldn't pay rent for three months because you wanted to go to the casino all three months. And then you done sat there. Can't take care of my little cousins because you sitting there spending all your money. Like, I would never say that because going to your Thanksgiving dinner is never that deep, but I am missing out on some liquor. And I don't really like that because that's my favorite place to go when I'm ready to drink because everything is free. And you'd be so messed up, you don't even realize that I'd take a couple of bottles with me. I could take bottles because they glass, and I know roaches can't get inside the liquor. So it's cool, Auntie. I didn't want to come anyway. But I wasn't out here telling your business or nothing. I would never do that. But that little SSI check you get every month for the child that you no longer have because you sent them to the daddy. I'm going to go ahead and call them and tell them that since we go going here. You know, we're a little petty right now or something. But I want to come ahead and tell your business over me not being invited to Thanksgiving. But anyway, I just wanted to let y'all know some simple, not too much. I just can't get invited and I'm trying to see who else can I go to. I won't tell your business. Today is Thanksgiving. It is a time of coming together. It is a time of celebrating together. I believe it's not a time of separating. Yes, politics have put us apart. Politics have taken away families. Politics have separated a lot of people. But the whole year, there might be something you'll be 
thankful to. There might be something like you be thankful. That's what I think. So don't be like those people who say, oh no, I don't have something to be thankful for. No, you have. You have something to be thankful for. Yes. So please be thankful to those things. And then after this, it's okay. We keep, we got to keep fighting. Because in this world, we keep fighting. But at least let this day be a very nice day to come together, share, and be happy. In life, we have to be happy. Listen, these things will not last forever. There will be other stuff coming. There will be other things coming. Uh, so the situation you are in right now will not stay here together. And listen, there is nothing we're going to change. There's nothing we're going to do. Even if we go back and take, even if you go back and take your votes, he's not going to remove him as a president. No way. No way. You already did it. So if you did it, don't think about the past. Don't think about the past. Just think about the future. Don't be taken away by the past. What happened? You know, the votes. Your brother voted for Trump. You, you, he voted, he voted against your rights and something like that. It is okay. Yeah, it's okay. But remember, you need to be happy. That is, that, that is my sight. You need to be happy as yourself. So if you're happy as yourself, it's okay. Don't go to Thanksgiving. If you're happy as yourself, don't go to Thanksgiving. But I will not advise you to go in your room and then close and cry. No way. I will not advise you that. I would advise you to be happy. Just be happy. Do what makes you happy. Yes, I'm not here to decide on your side. I'm not here to decide for you, but just be happy. Enjoy the life. Above all, you have life to enjoy. You have to live. So please, my dear friend, watching this video, this is Thanksgiving 2024. Go and enjoy yourself. Don't lock yourself in the loom and say, no, I'm not going to celebrate, celebrate, because you are alive. Celebrate, you have something to be happy for. Celebrate that you are able to reach in Thanksgiving 2024. That is my message to Thanksgiving. Let's keep in, in FAFO season. We are going to enjoy this FAFO season for people who voted against the rights of other people. So thank you so much for being here. I wish you all the best. I wish you happy Thanksgiving. See you in the next video.